Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, you will learn how to control a continuous rotation servo motor with an Arduino. In contrast to a positional servo motor, which we covered in our previous video, which can only rotate about 180 degrees, as you can see, a continuous servo can go through complete rotations. In this video, we'll talk about the differences and how you control it with Arduino code. Note that one thing that is not different is the wiring. This servo also has three wires, one for signal, one for power, and one for ground. But as with positional servos, the color coding convention might vary by manufacturer. In this case, it's orange for signal, red for power, and brown for ground. But that could be different for different servos. So make sure you look at the information for your servo to figure out which wire is which. Here we have a modified version of the example code that we looked at in the last video. If you haven't watched our positional servo tutorial yet, we recommend watching that first. You can find the playlist linked in the description of this video. But if you need to reopen the program, remember that you can go up to File, Examples, all the way down to Servo, Sweep. You can see that here I have deleted everything in the loop function, and I am just using a single write command to send a number to the servo one time in the setup function. That is just going to make the servo rotate at a constant speed forever. Now, here is where this gets a little confusing. The Arduino servo library uses the same code for both positional servos and continuous rotation servos, even though their motion is different. So remember that for a positional servo, we send it a number between zero and 180 that corresponds to its angular position in degrees. You can see in the video on the side of the screen that if I send a 180 to the continuous rotation servo, it makes it spin full speed counterclockwise. And if I change this number to a zero and re-upload the code, you might expect that that would make the motor stop because we are sending it a zero. But if I upload it, we see that it actually makes the motor spin full speed in the clockwise direction. So the motor has switched direction and is still going full speed. Sending it a zero does not make it stop. If we want to make it stop, we need to enter a number in the middle of that range, 90. So if we send a 90 to the motor and re-upload the code, that is going to make it stop rotating, as you can see here. We can see that there's actually a bit of a range to this. For example, if I change this to a 95 and re-upload the code, the servo still doesn't rotate. It actually doesn't start rotating again until I get all the way up to 98. That might seem kind of strange, but it is actually convenient if you are controlling the servo with a potentiometer. You can find example code for that under File, Examples, Servo, Knob. That takes an analog input from a potentiometer and uses it to control the servo. That means you don't have to have the potentiometer in exactly the right place to get the servo to stop. There's a little bit of wiggle room. If it helps you remember, you can write this out in comments in your code. For example, zero is full speed clockwise. Something between zero and 90 would be clockwise at a slower speed. 90, although a little bit above or below that, is stopped. And then 180 is full speed counterclockwise. So the tricky part is again, remembering that you don't send it a zero to stop, you send it a 90 to stop. Note that just like we did for the positional servo, if it didn't have a true range of 180 degrees, you can use the Arduino map function to map a variable that you create with a more intuitive range, like negative 100 to 100, to the range required by the write command, which is zero to 180. So in this program, I would control the speed variable to set the speed of my servo, and in this case, zero would actually be stopped. Negative 100 would be full speed one direction, 100 would be full speed in the other direction. And then this line of code using the map function automatically converts that to the zero to 180 range, which I then send to the servo using the write command. There you have it. You should now know the difference between positional and continuous rotation servos and how to control them with an Arduino so you can use them in your projects. Check out our Arduino playlist and subscribe for more tutorial videos in the future.